All right, thank you very much there for that uh, background. We have guests with us here in the studios as well as another guest joining us from Lagos. Uh, with us here in the Abuja studios, let's welcome Honorable uh, Magaji Dao Aliu, who is chairman of the House of Reps Committee on Power. Honorable Magaji, pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Also here with us in the studios, we'd like to welcome engineer Maman Jimon Lawal, his executive director, independent system operator of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. Engineer Mama, pleasure to have you this morning. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Also in the Abuja studio with us is uh, engineer Dr. Wilson Ali. He works for Zafron Consulting Company and uh, Energy and Power System Consulting Firm in Abuja. Thank you for joining us, uh, engineer Ali. Thank you for having me. Good morning. And uh, from Lagos, uh, we've been joined, uh, that's in our studio in Lagos, we've been joined by Odion Omon Foma, an energy expert and chief executive officer, New Hampshire Group. Glad to have you on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you for having me on Good Morning Nigerians. Okay, uh, gentlemen, once again, a uh, pleasure to have you with us on, on the program today. Let's uh, just begin by breaking this down for uh, our, our viewers. We keep reading and hearing about national grid collapse. Uh, and when the national grid collapses, uh, there is a blackout uh, in most, if not nearly all parts of, 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 of the country. Uh, the frequency with which this has occurred, of course, uh, uh, raises the uh, key questions as to what the national grid is all about. Let our viewers understand it in the electricity value chain, beginning with engineer Mama Jimo Lawa. What is the national grid and why do we have just one? Thank you very much. Okay, we'll, we'll put it in context. The grid, the electric power grid, is a network of power system resources held together in a balance, as it were. This balance is delicate. It is shaped by a number of factors and parameters. The dynamics of these parameters would dictate to what extent the grid stability can be maintained. For instance, let's look at the dynamics of generation. We have generating stations all over the grid and we also have the dynamics of uh, the distribution networks. I would say network because we have level distribution companies and each of them, you know, will have uh, different approaches to their internal business processes. But the fact is that the activities in all of these will dictate the margin of grid stability attainable at any instant. Then you also had the perspective of uh, the transmission system owned by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, the only entity that was not privatized. Looking at the grid topology and the configuration at any instant, of course, you would wonder to what extent can we maintain grid stability? For instance, uh, by topology I mean Let's look at the matrix, the grid matrix. And when I talk about the grid, it's not just about the transmission system now. You have the transmission system in between, and you have the interface points between transmission and the discos, and between transmission and the uh, entire body of uh, the generators. <coughs> if, for instance, there's an issue in a power plant to the effect that this matrix is distorted. There are some fundamental parameters that will be affected. At any instant, generation should be at par with the demand, or at least should be close, you know, a near equilibrium should be established at any instant. If the grid is perturbed, by any unwholesome event, that disequilibrium is, you know, is distorted, and to that extent, some measure of instability is introduced. <coughs> Sorry, please. 
And in some cases, the grid is driven to the edge. If we do not have adequate remedial actions to help the situation, then it may culminate in system failure, which we often refer to as grid we, collapse. We, we would talk about the system failure really much later and then see how this affects power supply and, uh, in this country. But uh, is, you're sounding too technical, I'm sorry to say. It's uh, how do you break this just down for the government to understand okay. really what the grid is and then Thank why you. do we have only one, <coughs> as you said? Okay, let me, let me take it this way. Down. Let me take it this way. Yeah. I talked about the electric power grid as a composition of power system resources. By power system resources, I'm referring to the generators, I'm referring to the power transformers, mm -hmm. okay, I'm referring to the reactors. Mm -hmm. Basically, we understand what yeah. power transformers, you know, I mean, what their functions are mm -hmm. in the network. And of course, the generators. Okay, which, so which that's what is it a better pass by neighbor? No, 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 no. I'm so, so specify <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm talking of the generators we have at the power stations. The generators we have at the power stations. Okay, then you have the transmission lines. Mm -hmm. And I also talked about a matrix. It's just like the steering matrix in our car. Okay, if anything happens and there's a measure of distortion in that matrix then it creates you know it creates some 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 issues all right it vitiates our ability to effectively control the car mm -hmm. okay this is analogous to what obtains in grid management mm -hmm. for instance as i did mention generation is supposed to be at par with demand if something happens and a generator face. The major parameter that is indicative of grid stability measure is what we refer to as system frequency. In our own climb, it is 50 hertz, 50 seconds per second. When that happens, when we lose a quantum of power, for instance, the frequency, you know, declines relative to the demand. Okay. Uh, okay. okay? I, I, and conversely, uh, sorry yeah. please, if I would just marshal this. Yes. <coughs> conversely, if we lose a major load, then the frequency appreciates. It simply means that there's a dip in load and correspondingly an escalation in generation at that moment. So it creates, you know, an, uh, a distorting impact in the balance. Uh, okay. I, you know, en so engineer, engineer Mama, let's pause you. Uh, but let's bring in uh, another engineer, uh, Dr. Wilson Ali, uh, so that you can still further break this down. For, for us lay persons who don't have any training in uh, the electrical or electronic engineering or power systems, w there are three aspects that we, we generally we take a look at following uh, from the privatization exercise or the unpacking of the power sector. You have the Jenkos. That is those who generate power, such as I was talking about generators earlier, we're cracking a joke whether uh, those generators refer to a better pass my neighbor. Giregu power plant, Alauji, and the various power plants mm -hmm. that you have around the country, Kenji, uh, and so on and so forth. Those ones are Jenkos. Then when they generate, what we understand is that they take it through the transmission system. And what we hear about the transmission, or what we, some of us know about the transmission system, is mm -hmm. that it, it's, you know those uh, electric pylons that you see, uh, uh, high tension, the so-called high tension yeah. cable system with a switching center at Oshobo. Those ones will now take it to uh, the discos. And there are issues, of course, with discos. Uh, sometimes discos will reject uh, the power that is uh, uh, given to them. But our concern this morning is why the Jenkos generate their power, put it on the transmission network, and then the reports that we get to hear, the network of that transmission collapses and then the country is thrown into a blackout, sometimes lasting for a couple of days or more. Well, just what is all of this, Engineer Ali? Uh, good morning, Nigerians, once again. Uh, the power system is, uh, apart from the human body, is a very complex uh, system. Complex in the sense that uh, 
it requires a delicate balance an equilibrium has to be maintained between power supply and load demand as my as the earlier commentator said but then the issue that arises that leads to uh, system collapse are numerous most of them hinge on disequilibrium in frequency what leads to that about two or three things uh, you can have generator shutdown for remediation for maintenance and everything in within the system itself power plants you can have um, issues arising from so many other uh, motors, pumps that are sensitive to frequency. When you have these changes within the power plant itself, the generator will shut down. Then you have other issues that external to the system. When you have uh, uh, lines dropping, maybe trees falling on, uh, on, on high transition lines, or you have sudden rejection of loads, all this impact on system frequency. And again, you want to find out, you want to know how, why do this happen? Ordinarily, we should have kind of protection system from the lines that should communicate with the system, with, the, with that of the power plant. When this, when this system are not communicating with each other, then we have a problem then it is normal when, there's, when you have load demand exceeding the generation, then there will be a dip in frequency. When you have that dip in frequency, then it is necessary to ask other, generation, other generations, generators to switch on to take a balance. But when there's no communication between the National Control Center from communication and the, the generation, then you have an issue to contend with. And the progressive, if maybe the spinning reserve is not quickly activated or that generator is not quickly activated, then this generator, the other functioning generator will start uh, falling off, shutting down progressively. And that's when you have the system collapse. Uh, many thanks, uh, Engineer Wilson. We'll get back to you later and see how these systems collapse, you know, affect, you know, the grid itself and indeed Nigerians. And um, basically, that's why we're here enhancing the grid and, of course, improving power supply in this country. Um, Honorable Magajidao Aliu, you represent Nigerians at the National Assembly. You feel the pulse of Nigerians. Power is a very major issue in this country. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't think anybody is spared because no matter what, even if it is going to be with a past my neighbor, you need to complement what NEPA or rather what uh, the power you know, providers are giving the people. And you appropriate also in this regard for the government and the people of Nigeria. With $1.6 billion investment in the sector, and still there seem to be great problems in the sense of trying to provide power to at least half of Nigerians comfortably. I mean, does that really constitute a big worry at the National Assembly? If it does, how big is it? Well, thank you very much. I, it's really a very big worry. And when I found myself the chairman of House Committee on Power, and I can see the enormous pressure mm. because, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a utility. But this question we're asking, um, these people are too technical. Mm -hmm. I believe we have all this problem because of basically three things. Right. Number one is corruption. Number two is technical. That's what they, was, they are speaking. Number three is human. Um, there is infrastructure deficit in power sector despite the colossal amount of money invested. And there is lack of following due process of the law. We have beautiful laws. Mm -hmm. But you see, because I think we are parents in this country, we break the law. We don't do what the law says. These are basically the issues. 
And if we don't address them, sadly, it will be a long time for Nigeria to have power. Because I had opportunity to go around to the generating companies. I visited TCN. I know all the distribution companies. You see, there is such a blame game. If we go back to 2005, we did the privatization in a hurry. There was no test. Probably, let's say, okay, let's start with one unit. We sold everything at the same time. You see, in Nigeria, we do what we call, you sell your house to buy groceries. <laughs> you know, in house, kai kase de gira kai chepani. You see, uh, if you look at the, the pressure we have in National Assembly on trying to make people follow the law, let me give you an example. Embed. Embed, we just one day wake up and they said that Embed should report to the Ministry of Finance. It's an abrasion. When the president come, come with a wonderful idea of bringing the Siemens project, now, overnight, everything has changed. The Siemens project has a different company called Nigerian Power Coin. There is no correlation. There's no, nobody is working together. And people are telling, probably, Mr. President, something, uh, something, uh, something different. I believe there is a problem. I can even not embassage one will be out of it. If you go to the discourse, my God, that one, because they are the, they are the pest of the industry, the problem is massive. Every day I receive an average of 100 petitions from various discourse in this country. From customers, not satisfied. Talk about the, 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 the issue of the, of, the, of the meter. I was only reading from NDA that they are, they are going to do that, they are going to start the second pest. Even the first pass has not been completed. So this is what this, so this, this is the corruption. And what do I mean by infrastructure deposit? Mm. You, he was asking question, why do we have only one national grid? Yeah. If you go, when you pass uh, Kaduna, there's only one line taking all power to Kano, Kasina, and the rest of the north. When are we going to do the second line? When are we going to have another, another transmission line from Lagos to Ibadan? You know, this there is a very heavy infrastructure deposit in power sector. And there's corruption. Massive. We are trying now to review the, the, the 2005 Act. We have gotten a lot of input from all the, all the stakeholders. We hope that if we do th this new Act, the Senate are doing their own, we're doing them, we'll harmonize. We are trying to really bring um, some sanity into the system. We have everything it takes to be great. But in Nigeria, I think that um, we need to do things differently. Okay, uh, Honorable Makaji, but thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll of course, we'll return to you to further elaborate on some of the uh, challenges that you have identified and how we can overcome them. I'm happy that you mentioned the Siemens perspective because the reports that uh, were uh, published and even broadcast was that, oh, Siemens was coming to intervene uh, in our transmission uh, uh, network. I think they have a number of years to do that. But it's worrisome what you are saying now that uh, there appears to be a change in the coloration of uh, very, that Siemens. A very, a very big change. Probably if you ask TCN <coughs> now, he cannot tell you anything about what's happened about the, about, about the cement project. That's entirely a different mechanism now. A new model going on. So we are lucky that uh, TCN is here. That's right. Let's uh, ask him. But straight away, Regina Mama. So that we drop because that. part of what we heard mm. was that, oh, TCN was coming, <coughs> and the facility that raised some furore said, no, 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 this is part of our infrastructure upgrade. Uh, is it? I mean, are, are we still looking at uh, the same uh, the same issue as Honorable uh, Wakaji is uh, drawing our attention to? Thank you very much. The Siemens program 
actually is the flagship of the Presidential Power Initiative. Uh, as it stands, it is being handled by the presidency, not directly under the supervision of uh, the Honorable Minister of Power. Uh, I may not be able to talk extensively talk. on that. Mm. Yes, suffice to quickly uh, make this uh, intervention. If you don't mind, I just want to take you back a little. Mm. Why talking about uh, system collapse incidents? Uh, I felt we really have to put it in perspective so that we understand exactly what the trajectory has been over time. In 2017, for instance, we had 15 collapse incidents. That is total grid failure. In the following year, 2018, we had 12. 2019, we had nine. We had nine. And 2020, last year, we had four. So you can see there has been a systematic improvement in grid performance. If you want to take it from, you know, the position of uh, system failure incidents. You, you, you are using 20, so 2020, where there was lockdown for several months, and so the power demand probably was much lower than no, we ordinarily would expect. It was Businesses shut down, and uh, I, I don't know. I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just. I'm just throwing this in as, as a lay person. Yes. I, it, it wasn't. In 2014, for instance, the total energy generated in the year was about 30 million, 100,000 megawatt hours. But as at last year, it rose above 33,000, I mean 33 million megawatt hours. So that explains it empirically. There has been a systematic improvement. Okay. Megawatt <coughs> hours. Megawatt hours. That is energy in the year. In excess of 30 million megawatt hours, mm, okay. so there has been a systematic, uh, you know, a gradual improvement in grid performance. Uh, okay. Bring it down to what Nigeria really energy. understand in the fact of trying to that see we have 4,000 4, megawatts, 5,000 megawatts, something way? like that. That is over time, more energy has been made available to Nigeria and the international customers as well. So grid performance has improved over time okay. and steadily too. Okay, uh, but, but there, there are still reported incidents of total system failure, which is what we are dealing with. We will return to the causative factors and how we can, of course, uh, enhance the performance of, of the country's uh, national power grid. Uh, in uh, Lagos Network Center, we earlier introduced Odion Omoforma. Uh, Mr. Omoforma, you are an energy expert. Uh, just give us your own uh, perspective as to this whole issue. A number of points have come up already from the guests who are here with us uh, in the Abuja studios. Uh, what is it that we are dealing with? I mean, do, do we have a hands-on approach to uh, uh, ensuring that uh, national power grid performs optimally or we're just grappling with uh, the basics still and facing big challenges ahead of us? Okay, thank you, and I think before I dive into the issue, it's important to revisit the first question you asked, which is what is grid collapse, right? Like the two engineers have said, and I am not an engineer, so I'll try and put it in very layman terms. Grid collapse is, simple, is simply an imbalance in the system. So like every market, the electricity market has demand and supply. Demand from the load side, supply from the people who generate the power. And the interconnector is the transmission, the grid. That's, that's the definition of the grid. That system that connects the generator to the demand uh, uh, through an intricate system of uh, technology. Now, when there is an imbalance, in other words, take for instance, uh, Egbin Jenko has six turbines. If for instance, Egbin loses two turbines, each of those turbines about 200 megawatts, Egbin loses like two turbines, that's 400 megawatts. Now, typically, there should be a corresponding drop in the load from the disco side or however. Now, the system should compensate by either saying, okay, which other generation company can provide the 400 megawatts lost by Egbin? And if that doesn't happen, how, do, how does the system drop 400 megawatts to make sure the system is balanced? On the converse side, if, for instance, 
uh, one of the major load points, say uh, Ikeja Disco maybe loses certain load and then the demand drops by say 200 megawatts, right? What the transmission system should do is to say, okay, let's see how we can compensate for that load. Who needs 200 megawatts or where can I knock off 200 megawatts? Now, these things are done in instantaneous manner. So at any point in time, both the demand and supply is instantaneous because you cannot store electricity uh, in large quantities economically yet. So that balance has to be maintained. And that's why they talk about frequency uh, stabilization. Now, we must know something. I think TCN has unfairly carried a lot of this blame in system collapses without uh, people realizing that uh, this system collapses go beyond TCN. So for instance, if Egbin doesn't have enough gas to run its turbines, for instance, uh, the Niger Delta militants blow up a gas line, it will trip up generation. There's really nothing that the transmission can do other than to look for how to drop the load or each of the other participants in the system, which is the grid, start to shut down to protect themselves. So really, grid collapse is actually a way of the system to protect itself until that balance is regained again and it, it comes up. Uh, on the load side, you have, this is a raining season. And you typically find that when it rains, electricity just goes off. So you find out that there's such a rapid drop in load that at some point in time, the system struggles to find an equilibrium. And if it doesn't find that equilibrium instantaneously, it starts to shut down, tells the Jenkos to shut down. Now, the, once you understand that, it is then easy to start to situate what the issues are and how we can reduce some of these uh, collapses. Uh, first of all, we have agreed that, is, that the reliability is not there. So you have what you call the N minus one. So uh, 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 N minus one criteria. We don't have that. All our lines are radial, so it's point to point. So um, Egbin is connected to Ikeja Disco with one line. If that line goes down, there's no connector that can reroute power to, to Ikeja or take power elsewhere. Uh, so we must have that N minus, we, we, we're lacking a reliability in the grid from an N minus one status, right? And that is what the grid really needs to make sure that it is, it is resilient and there's enough redundancy in the system. Uh, the Honorable talked about um, uh, corruption in the system. I, I would say yes, but that is really not the biggest issue in the sector. The biggest issue is the lack of investment Despite all the 16 billion or 8 billion, whoever you want to, depending on who you, who you talk to, there's a lack of um, investment in the system to bring, that, bring about that M minus uh, one reliability. And that investment is huge because you need to create enough lines that will say, look, if one line goes down or one Jenko goes down, we have spinning reserves as well to, to, to bring it up. Spinning reserves also cost money. We have a situation where generators are not, Jenkos are not being paid. The gas companies are not being paid. So it's hard to maintain spinning reserve. And that has been an issue that I know the regulator has struggled to, 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 to manage. We also have investment that is required on the generator side. They need to have what you call governor systems to manage their frequency. Number of these generator companies do not have the free governor system, whereby, uh, for instance, the frequency imbalance can arise from generators who cannot manage their frequency that they put into the network. You need to be able to, uh, generators on their side need to make that investment as well. On the side of the discos, and I'm very happy the Honorable spoke about it, the issues there. There's a lot of investment that is required also to make sure that the disco system, uh, they, they have well protected system, they can take in load, not just drop load when it rains or when the sky just goes dark, it just drop load and then there's an imbalance in the system. So once we look at the various aspects of the grid, which is on the generation side, the grid itself, which connects the generation and the, uh, the demand and the supply side, and then on the, on the load side, which is the disco, then we're able to situate the investments that is required. We're also able to situate the type of uh, capacity buildup that we need across the value chain. And then we can then apply the, the necessary investment and the necessary oversight to making sure that the investments are done. I'll, I'll stop here while I allow others to carry on. Let's still not forget what you <coughs> earlier pointed out. Uh, it's a question, you know, posed by my colleague at the beginning of this uh, conversation. We're talking about the grid and enhancing the grid in Nigeria. Um, if there are uh, failures or problems along the lines and the grids, you know, could, um, the grid could not really take up, 
and there is no any other way of trying to reroute power to some other place until when the grid is rectified. That's why the question of should we have only one grid in the country comes up. Because we need alternatives. In case there is a problem somewhere, how do we really get across and then maybe solve that problem without, you know, the consumer really knowing? Very good question. We, we have one grid because the way I manner the grid started, it, it was built from a, from, from a radial nature, or from one source. So the grid actually started from uh, building out from Kainji, which was our first, uh, which was one of our major bulk uh, providers, supplier of electricity. And then we then had the, 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 the Jenkos in the south using the gas. So we've had a situation where the grid has been built in a radial manner. Uh, and then, so you then have like a one grid uh, uh, structure. However, that's not to say that the grid is operated uh, uh, in a, in a, 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 how do I put it now? The grid is sort of broken down into regions, geographical regions and control centers. I think TCN has like about six control centers. But that said, you can't, uh, so you can say you have like six grids per se, but it, you have the Oshobo Center controlling that. However, you, because of the investments required, number one, number two, the sensitive, the, 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 the role that the grid plays in terms of connecting the Jenkos to the uh, discos that are spread all over Nigeria, you have a system where you need uh, somebody in the center, the NCC, the National Control uh, Center in the Shobo manages the dispatch of load and generation across board. But that's not to say that it's only one control center you have. You have regional control centers. Uh, but that said, what you, re what you require is a number of loops to take away, uh, to, 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 to create redundancies across lines, major lines. And those loops are quite expensive. So TCN really needs uh, uh, investment, but those investments should be backed up by studies to make sure that all the generation uh, 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 companies are connected to distributors. And then on the load side, there's investment to make sure that uh, the, the, the requirements that you need uh, to take in more power, you have it without dropping load. And on the generation side, you also have made the investment to, to, to ensure that your frequency or what you put into the, the grid, you send to discos through the grid, is meet the grid uh, requirement so that you do not trip off the grid. But having said that, we have one grid because that's the way our manner the, the, the transmission infrastructure was built. And breaking it into uh, corridors uh, would mean a lot of investments as well because of the way our manner the generation uh, companies are cited. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Odion Morfoma. We'll return to you. Let's come back to uh, Engineer Wilson uh, Ali. Again, seeking to just understand the nature of our national power grid. Some year, as recently as some years ago, what we got to hear was that, oh, if we were to take the national grid as a loop, that is to say from one point to another, and then it comes and then it joins that, that would be 100%. That's to say a full loop would be 100%. But we heard that I think our national grid, that the loop was around about 60% or thereabout, and that we needed uh, to invest, and that is why there was always budgeting for the power sector, even after privatization. I remember mm -hmm. there were a few comments that came up. So how come you are still voting so much money uh, for the power sector? But it's okay. TCN is under government. This is what government needs to do. Expand the loop itself, but it, it is the efficiency or effectiveness of, I don't know what coverage area we have now, whether it's 60% or 65 or it has fallen or, or otherwise. Is this an efficient way to manage power transmission, uh, listening to the breakdown, the, uh, if you like, elementary breakdown by, by Mr. Moffoma, is this an efficient way or we are, we are getting it wrong? Is it time for us to say, look, let's begin to, in layman's language, decentralize uh, the national grid? Uh, first of all, um, it's not, uh, the grid is not right for regional, uh, for us to have regional grid system now. Uh, the whole of Northeast, there's no power plant. And um, there are other, there are, most of our power, power plants are concentrated mm -hmm. in the Middle Belt and South 
south and southwest also. What would you have other grids do? Isolate them. And having a unit, a unit, a, 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 a single grid system is far, far better for us. What we need to do is huge investment, create redundancies such that when one line fails, we can reroute the system. For quite a long time, there was no investment in the system. And this system needs consistent, regular investment over years. If even the mandate given to, to, to Siemens to deliver 25,000 25, megawatts, it's even, it's even a pittance compared to our requirement. A scheme has to be put in place where regular funding has to be, uh, the program funded regularly. But how do we go about that? Do we really have the resources? Do we really have the money? These are things we have to look at. But then, issue of, regular, issue of regional grid, let's, for now, for now, let's, let's lay it to rest. But why are you saying we should lay it to rest? Because we're trying to find a means of trying to enhance the national grid, uh, given the fact that if these grids or uh, these uh, power, you know, uh, power plants in the Middle Belt, as you said, and southern part of this country, if most of them maybe have some problems, it seems most of the country is going to fall into darkness. But imagine a situation where efforts are being made to ensure that regions, all regions, all geopolitical zones, if I put it that way, have power plants. And if there is a problem in one, the other one can complement and supplement it and then move it forward so that at the end of the day, the consumer does not really feel that there is a failure in the system because there's going to be a makeup from some other plants. Enhancing the national grid, that's the focus this morning. What would you say about this? Yes, um, as I said earlier on, um, there are some regions without power plants. We can come up. The Mambila, uh, power, the Mambila Hydro Project, mm -hmm. if it comes up, that would be a plus to the national grid. But until that comes up, we have to make do with what we have now. The, the, nobody per se wants to disagree, would like to disagree with issue of regional grids or with, with tie lines to the main grid, okay? But then, this requires huge investment. How long have we been on the Mambila Plateau, on the Mambila Power Project? Decades. If we are able to pull that through, fine. But then, huge investment. Do we have the resources? Honestly, no, we don't have. We do not have for now. But what we can progressively do is build more lines, build more substations, create redundancies, as I said earlier on, the N minus one, so that when one line collapses, when one line fails, power can be routed to other lines to deliver energy to other places. That is what we require now. Huge investment. Build more power plants. We have, of course, you have to, we have to look at issue areas where we have uh, hydro resources. And you know the cost, if you have to move, uh, building other thermal, thermal plants in the north, it's not to me, it's not economically viable for now. Unless perhaps when this AKK project gets through, we can build some power plants along that route. But for now, it's, we have to make do with what we have. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Engineer Mamman, I know you are itching to, to, to say something with, yes, with, regard, with <laughs> regard to this. Uh, uh, let, let's not conflate the issues. Yes, you, you know that you need the Jenkos for your transmission uh, line to, uh, to be useful. Uh -huh. But it is not necessarily the case that if you have regional uh, power grids, then you won't have a national power grid. Uh, is that the argument? Okay. Or what do we know now at the moment? Okay, please, I, I will keep your indulgence to deviate a little before I get back to your question. 
let the deviation not be too far off. No, it you're a mathematician as well. I can assure you, it's standard be. deviation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I agree. We really have to improve on grid infrastructure. But let's let's look at the existing infrastructure and its capability. As at yesterday, the grid generation in store capacity stood at 13,014.4 megawatts. I repeat, 13,014.4 megawatts. But the peak generation we recorded yesterday was below 5,000 megawatts. The available generation is well below 5,500 megawatts. So you can see, the available generation is not even up to 50% of the installed capacity. What are the issues? You have several vitiating you know, factors that we have to look at. Principal among these is gas supply, gas to power. We have issues with gas supply. Most of the power plants do not have firm agreement with their suppliers. So they get this gas on the basis of best endeavor, which is inconsistent with the requirements of growth and development. So we just have to put this in perspective and find a way around it so that we can get it right. If we just go about, of course, as I, as I mentioned earlier, TCN is you know, pursuing uh, so much investment in the sector, but we have to mark this with the need for resource optimization. It is critical, otherwise we'll have so much idle capacity that do not make economic sense. Uh, by, by this month, we expect that uh, Nigeria should be able to take 28, about 28,800 megawatts of power. Considering that uh, some loads are perpetually unconnected, some loads are entirely suppressed. Okay, so how do we optimize the existing network resources? I think this should be cardinal in the considerations. Uh, yes, are you saying that are you saying that you don't have infrastructure issues at the moment? We do have, but it is not it is not a critical issue at this point. Transmission, the transmission system, the transmission system willing capacity is about eight thousand megawatts. And it has been empirically verified that at the level of distribution, they can take up to 6,000 megawatts, and probably above that. Stress tests were conducted over time, and this fact was clearly established through, you know, uh, concerted efforts of uh, the distribution and the transmission engineers. So, you know, like they say, uh, the chain is as strong as the weakest link. So if you take a historical uh, review of our performance over time, you'll agree with me that, uh, uh, you know, available resources are not optimally utilized. It's a big issue. Talking about uh, the grid, there was a time we really had we, we, the grid was sectioned into two islands, you know, reminiscent of what you refer to as two grids, in a sense. Uh, we assessed the performance and we discovered that it really did not help. Because when you have a grid, you have to look at uh, the generator synchronized to the grid. You have to look at the facilities. Are they dispatchable? Dispatchable in the sense, can you call them to give a quantum of power that is desired at any point in time to maintain grid stability, near reliability? Some of these power plants cannot even offer what we refer to as primary regulatory reserve. They, are, they don't have free governor, free governor system. Those that have free governor system, which they use to control the, the system parameters in order to keep the grid reliable in order that we do not get to a point that will culminate in system collapse. They don't have it. So if you create islands of the kind described by one of the uh, uh, commentators, 
then of course you will find it difficult to exercise any measure of grid control. It will simply mean that every now and then the grid is collapsing and you are restoring. Because this system, sorry, if I just, if I can just elaborate a okay. bit more, a bit further. You know, let's take this scenario. We lose major generation. Say the entire every power station is out and there's a dip in frequency. We have remedial action schemes in place. The so-called under-frequency load sharing scheme, for instance, will have to disconnect equivalent load in order to maintain the balance. If, for instance, we lost 600 megawatts from EGBI, then we have to disconnect equivalent load, that is 600, in order to keep frequency within uh, operational limit that supports grid stability. Because what happens is, when that happens, there is sudden frequency decay, and the generators are configured to protect themselves, as one of our colleagues earlier mentioned. So below certain threshold, and of course each generator will have you know, different uh, thresholds depending on you know, their design. So the generators you know, uh, desynchronize one after the other until the grid phase entirely. So not every power plant has what it takes to maintain grid stability. That is why it is practically impossible to disaggregate the grid into various uh, 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 you know, segments. Okay? So what we have as regional control centers, as a matter of fact, do not depict uh, you know, different uh, grids, no. Okay. All right? It's just for operational convenience. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I wouldn't want to bother you with uh, Okay, yes. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that later, talking about how we would be able to really um, balance between the production of gas and the consumption of gas and the requirements in order to get this, uh, you know, power generated at that level. That's where one of the major problems are. But I don't want us to forget about the Siemens perspective we talked about much earlier. I should bring in uh, Honorable Magaji Dawali here to really shed more light on that and see. It is said uh, that it is a presidential power initiative. And alluding to what you earlier said, it seems like it has maybe lost or it's losing its face or its own, uh, you know, concept or perspective from the beginning. Could you shed more light on that and then see where we are headed from where we left? Well, I think much more than you appreciate that the presidential power initiative um, is going down the drain. Um, we have Ministry of Power in this country, which are the policy makers. It's only in this country that we see um, that a function of the Ministry of Power is being done by other, by other agencies. Like this all important Siemens project, the, I, don't, I don't think there's any person in Ministry of Power that will explain anything on it, because it's done by another, by another, by another organization. Which organization? Probably they say the presidency right. is in charge of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also the issue of embed, mm -hmm. is a minister of finance. Now there's another thing they call service le level agreement. It's been handled, it's all a power program. It's been handled by CVN. So you could see, you could see the issues. If I say corruption, I don't mean somebody taking money or, uh, you know, or stealing. Mm -hmm. When you come in with, the, the, you say you want to establish a generation company, and you, have, you, are, you, are, you sign the contract, and you don't do what the contract agreed. That's corruption. When, when we sold the disco for you, and that you are to invest, and you are not doing what you've been asked to, that's also corruption. So it's, it is really multi multilateral. And I think we are only cheating ourselves as Nigerians, that we don't talk or we don't shout. Because the president must, has to know that, that the, that the minister of power does not know anything that is happening. I stand to be corrected on this same project. Also on MBET. So these are the issues. We have laws guiding this, but we don't follow the laws. So we can never, we can never make progress. The NBET, the, the NBET, I, I, I don't know. The NBET, of course, stands for the bulk electricity trader. Yes. Uh, and it's supposed to serve as a bridge between 
the, uh, the traders in the, in the value chain, Jenkos and, 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 and Discos. I, I, I'm just, you know, just concerned because apparently from the conversation we are having, yes, when there are issues with uh, the Jenkos, it could have, those issues could affect uh, the, our transmission. When there are issues with this cause, it could also affect our transmission. But what are those issues that are internal or inherent to transmission itself, which we can deal with? Uh, that's that's part of what are we building on the you're saying, uh, Engineer Mama, that oh, infrastructure may not necessarily be uh, a critical challenge at this particular time. But Honorable uh, no, no. Uh, uh, Magaji here pointed out a number of things. No, it is. We have almost um, 8,000 or 9,000 kilometers. Of three th of three thirty, and also almost four thousand kilometers of th of of, uh, of one three two. Am I correct? And these are not adequate. So you see, these are things that we built since nineteen sixties. You understand? We are now TCN. They're doing very well. The engineers are wonderful. You understand? But they don't have enough. You are talking of the loof. Mm. You are talking of the circuits. You understand? We have to achieve that. They don't even have SCADA. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. And he's just telling us that even some Jenkos, they don't have the governors to stabilize the power. All those are infrastructure. If they don't have it, they are corrupt. You see, there has to be policies. The policy has to be followed. There must be rules, and there must be punishment. This is where NAC come in, mm -hmm. the regulators. They will have to have to bring out the big stick mm -hmm. to start really putting people back on the line. Unless, of course, we'll continue to be do having these discussions. If you see the colossal amount of money being expended in this, six, uh, this sector, your hearts will bleed. And you don't have consolation. We, as representatives of Nigerians, you can see the amount of pressure. You can see honorable members and senators buying trans distribution transformers for their communities. Sure. It shouldn't be so. Sure. You see honorable members spending their own money, buying, doing extension of distribution grid. OK, let me give you another example. We had one agency called Major Delta Power Handling Company. One of us and Brink of this project, he did it with a very, with a very wonderful idea. Money was, was removed from the federation account in billions of dollars to build these power plants. The essence was when this power plant optimized, they would sell it and come and build power plant in the north. Now they wake up only of three or four weeks ago that they won't sell the power plants. And we say we don't have enough. The whole policy, you know, has been meddled off. I had, to do a, I had to do an investigative hearing on the sale of power, uh, major Delta Power Holding Company power plants. In this country, we don't even think about security. Our principal um, Canada, they are the ones who are buying our privatization. The government owns a power plant. In London, you guess the government has still, has, has still uh, uh, has, has, has a power plant. Also in America, but in Nigeria, we won't sell everything. So you see, the problem are so much. And we are only, there is no foreigner who is coming to do it for us. We do it, uh, it is we, Nigerians. <laughs> All right, uh, Honorable Magaji uh, and uh, the other gentlemen who are part of this conversation, we're going to take a short break now. When we return, we'll continue with other aspects of the issues. Hey, welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria with this morning discussion enhancing power grid in this country in Nigeria that is trying to see how the consumer and Nigerians could get more power uh, in their homes to really power their activities and power the economy. Before we went on break, um, Honorable Magaji, we were discussing the, you know, policy, somersault, policy bridges and policy issues in, the, in this regard, talking about how this affect, you know, government's effort in trying to give the necessary or the required power to Nigerians. And of course, it seems as if a lot more needs to be known by Nigerians in this regard because the pointing fingers are towards the TCN, the Jenkos, the whatever. And you find out that whenever there is a blackout, Nepal has the second of the light. 
whenever the night, I mean, uh, what is it called? Uh, the lights come, you say, Nepal is back. I mean, in quotes, I mean, right? That's just it. That's, that has been part of the psyche of the Nigerian. Now, take us through this. Why are these things becoming so much a problem for us? You see, many problems. You see, the typical customer doesn't care about all this, our English, all this technical. All he wants is to see flowers, is to see light. Let me give you an example. When they privatized the discourse, the government retained 40%. While the individual who, who won or own the discourse has 60%. But if you ask them, what last time did they, did they do AGM? Or who are, they representing those, who are those representing that 40%? Nobody will, nobody will answer you. Hmm. Nobody. So then we have to start looking at now um, another sector. Okay, how do we have renewable? How do we reduce, allow, probably if we cannot grow more than 5,000 sourced megawatt, okay, let us start going to the villages and do solar, you know, so mini grid, which the rural electricity agency are doing very well now. Mm. At least so that people in the village can see light. Yesterday, an honorable member came from Yusupari in Yobe State. That local government headquarters has been there for 30 years. They have never, they have never had light. 30 years. 30 years. And I'm, I'm not sure if the disco in Joss, who is covering that place, can even get that place. Even in my, in my community, because I'm chairman of power, if you see the kind of text message I receive from the customers, from my, my, my constituents, even some people threaten me not to vote for me again because there's no light in, the, in their village. But it's beyond me. <laughs> you see, unless, of course, the president, ha let me commend the president. I'm sure he's sincere. He has been doing a very good. But unless, of course, things are done normally, correctly, and according to the law, will not make progress. You can never do any power project without those engineers in power ministry. It can't happen. Because supposing after this government, they are looking for records, where would they go? Where would they go? You see, we are very lucky in this country. God saved us. When they wanted to privatize TCN and got from somewhere, people prayed. It didn't happen. <laughs> Had they been there, they sold TCN. That wouldn't have been lied in They sold TCN. That wouldn't have been lied in They sold TCN. That wouldn't have been lied in They sold TCN. That wouldn't have been lied in The have distribution company had their own function, but they wouldn't do it. I told you that I have been to all the power plants in this country. And this, there is another bigger issue. Take OP. There is a one, one, one secret cow. Mm -hmm. One very big power plant that Nigerians are famed for the fact they did not consume. That's another for another day. Which one is that? I will tell you next time. <laughs> so take OP. Take OP. You see, they say they, you see, they like, let me give you an example to, a, uh, to Nigerians. Listen, it's like you go and find one woman selling food. The woman will tell you that you cook 10,000 naira food. So if you cannot eat that 10,000 naira food, you must pay her. You must pay 10,000. You must pay 10,000. So there's a far plan in this country that we are doing this with. Every day we give them free money. Because we cannot, we cannot take all the power they're producing. Yeah, why can't we take all the power that they are producing? Is this not part of the transmission issue that we're talking about. Honorable Mangaji. Yes, because there is no grid. The grid cannot accommodate it. The discourse cannot take it. So one problem or the other. Hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll do a more for in, uh, in Lagos. We're, we're back to you. Uh, but of course, there are a number of issues on the plate at the moment. You may wish to comment on them. But I, I just w want you to uh, step back because I recall many years ago, well before the advent of, of, of the Fourth Republic, there used to be uh, this, this campaign. I mean, either communities or, or localities you know, would somehow uh, get their own power system or get their own uh, cables. And the next thing would be the campaign to say, oh, please link us to the national, who calls to the national grid? Who calls to the national grid? W w was that a mistake in terms of strategy? Uh, couldn't they have been building off-grid systems at that material time rather than, say, getting us to the national grid, which got, got overwhelmed? 
well before the privatization issue. Uh, so that's one. Second leg will be, well, from what you've been listening to what the guests are saying, Engineer Ali here says, look, this is not the time for us to get into re uh, regional grids uh, because you don't have power plants all over the place. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you, Kingsley. So the, on the first part, right, because of the way generation started from Kainji and Co, it was easier for the communities to create the distribution infrastructure and then ask for a hookup to the national grid. That's why you have a sort of a radial national grid because it just flowed with the load. Uh, in hindsight, perhaps that was uh, some form of error because we, sh we should have tried to match load generation with transmission. Uh, we just built uh, haphazardly. Uh, but that is not an issue per se, because at the end of the day, to the extent that they are connected to the, to the grid system, uh, the critical issue is ensuring that somebody who generates in Kainji or uh, 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 Calabar or uh, Ikorodu is able to put the power on the network, and somebody in Yobi or Karanamuda or Otoki can get the power and use. That is really the critical issue here. And that is where we have a lot of failings. I've listened to a number of the, uh, a number of, uh, the issues raised by the honorable member, and they're very germane and pertinent issues, but um, it speaks to one thing, a lack of coordination in the sector. You have, you have too many people speaking to the power sector, controlling the power sector, trying to manage the power sector. You have too many ad hoc vehicles set up to do power projects in, an, in a very uncoordinated manner. And you have too many coordinators, the office of the vice president, the minister of power, the presidency, some other in somewhere, somebody in the ministry of finance. So we have a very unstructured coordination such that at the end of the day, no matter the investment you throw into this, you just get very little results as we've seen. The NDPHC program was an excellent program where part of the stability we see on the on the transmission grid today was as a result of the some of the investments made under the NIPPs or under the NDPHG investments. But unfortunately, we've seen a lack of coordination uh, between all entities where some of these NDPHG projects are now stranded. You know, so we, we haven't gotten the results that we that we desire. Now, to speak to the issue of what the topic is today. I think internally, TCN has a lot of work it needs to do. There are five aspects TCN needs to focus on, at least to get us to some form of reliability in terms of the demand and the supply that we have at the moment. Uh, first of all is doing the reliability of the network, building redundancies in the network, having a visibility of the network. That is very critical. The honorable member spoke about SCADA. That's one of the things that SCADA is supposed to do, that system acquisition and data, uh, sorry, system control and data acquisition. Uh, that's something that is very critical in a modern grid system. You also, the, 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 the TCN also needs to be able to properly manage uh, frequency, frequency controls, either by imposing regulations on Jenkos or uh, having other ways to manage the frequency control. And lastly, you have interface issues. Interface issues perhaps are big when it comes to the interface between TCN and uh, the discos. Uh, so TCN has a lot of work investments that it, that it needs to do. And it's not all about financial investments. There's significant investments that TCN needs to do in its human capital. Because managing the grid also has to do with the quality of personnel manning uh, uh, the various aspects of the grid, coordinating. Uh, when a generator goes down, you don't pick up the phone and ask, I mean, are you running? The SCADA should tell you uh, you've lost 200 megawatts here. You need to balance out. And it's an instantaneous process. We don't have that. People use phones and they call. Uh, you know, So at the end of the day, you, you have the grid collapse when it shouldn't collapse because you don't have that investment and the human capacity uh, uh, to, to manage that uh, uh, well, problem. So I've mentioned the five areas, and these are aspects that the TCN is focused on. A number of the Siemens project and a number of the interventions being done internally in TCN is focused on uh, a, a lot of these areas, particularly the interface issues. The interface issues are perhaps one of the biggest issues that TCN will need to spend hard investments in. Now, coming to the issue of regional grid. You see, regional grid is 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 Personally, for me, it's neither here nor there to the extent that we do not have a deregulated electricity market. What we have is a regulated market. 
where at the end of the day, uh, all parties need to go to NERC and get approval for a tariff that is just, that just about pays what they, what they used to cover up. And to the extent that parties are not fully paid, so Jenko's generate, they don't get paid 100%. Gas producers produce gas, they don't get paid 100%. Uh, disco sell electricity, they don't collect 100%. So there's a, there's, a, there's a financial imbalance. And when you start to go into regional uh, uh, grids, it takes more than just stringing lines uh, together. You need to have a system of generators balanced within load supply within that area. Right, and that's a lot of investment. And to be, as, to, to, to be honest, with the low demand that we have right now, uh, I, I think going into the regional, uh, doing regional grids or disaggregating the grids into regional uh, uh, structures may not pay us uh, at the end of the day. All we need now is investment in uh, reinforcing the, the, the grid, building new loops. And that speaks to part of what I'll call merchant lines merchant transmission lines that's a form of concession first of all i'm against the wholesale privatization of tcn that is a that that is a no-no and the honorable member is correct had tcn be privatized when the discos were privatized we would have no electricity today that's a fact given what we've seen on the distribution side we would have had no electricity today so uh, it's it's happy it's good to know that uh, uh, whoever pushed for put for that plan uh, had to pull back but we can start to look at concessioning aspects of the grid and also encouraging private investors to do uh, merchant transmission lines. And merchant transmission lines, unfortunately, will mean that NERC would have to do a bit more of deregulating the sector so that if I build a transmission line from, by, from Bahrain to Wari, where I, have a load, where I have a load customer, I'm ensured that my tariff on that line, I can get it. You know, so, so there's a lot that happens, but what is missing in the entire sector, which, is, which, is, which seems to me we're just going round and round in circle, is the coordination or the absence of coordination. There are too many cooks in the kitchen trying to cook the power sector. And unfortunately, nobody has made a very good meal. Uh, I'll stop here and then maybe take follow-up questions. Thank you, Odion. Let's, uh, on the final note, let's have your part in, you know, uh, thought on this issue. You had him in junior moment, yes. and of course uh, he has already said so. Now let's let's get your final thought on this issue: investment in this uh, sector. How do we, you know, uh, get this very uh, sector diversified and investments made in order to enhance power in this country? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, he talked, you know, a number. Of, he talked about uh, a number of uh, critical issues, uh, reminiscent of. You know, the balance scorecard perspectives, how we run our internal businesses, the requirements of learning and innovation and a host of others. May I just take it from here? The system is integrated. Grid load dispatch is driven by demand. By this I mean, no matter the available generation, you cannot dispatch more than what the discourse can take. Mm -hmm. And demand side management is the exclusive of, of the discourse. Mm -hmm. They decide how much power to take, what quantum of power they need, and how it may be, you know, rooted. It is their exclusive preserve. Is that not supposed to be determined by the consumer demand? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. It has to be, but of course there are the elements of the distribution network that would dictate mm. where you can take power to and what quantum of power you can distribute at any instant. Mm. So it is exclusively their responsibility. Mm -hmm. So that, as I said, reload dispatch is a dictate of, you know, the demand. <coughs> Having said that, yes, most of these issues, you know, issues that uh, vitiate performance in grid management center around the fact that uh, the network is not yet adequately automated. And the SCADA EMS system he talked about is central to this critical role. Supervisory control and data acquisition, as well as uh, the derived function of energy management system. By this, we are saying that uh, whenever there is a perturbation anywhere, 
it is sensed automatically yeah, and remedial actions and are, taken are taken automatically too. Yeah. To you know, that know, balance. Engineer Maman, I'm yes. sorry, we, I'm happy to jump in here. Because we're getting pressed for time now. I, 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 want to, I, would, I would like Honorable Mangaji to speak to the political, if not like policy issues. And very briefly, there are too many persons we understand who are speaking to the power sector. Too many ad hoc vehicles. And then unstructured coordination. I'm taking these phrases from Odion and Morfoma and points that you have also spoken to. How do we get this right? Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm happy Ms. Odion has um, agreed with me in totally. Um, we, are trying to, we are trying to continue to do laws for, this for the good governance of this country. We are coming up with a review of the act that is going to be as explicit as AABC. We are going to make the laws to work that A, B, and C should be in A, B, and C. You know, because if we don't do that, if we leave any lacuna, we'll continue to have this kind of problem. A situation whereby you see power project in CBN, a situation whereby you see power project in Federal Ministry of Finance, a situation whereby you see power project in presidency, it doesn't work for this country. It has to be done under Ministry of Power. Whoever wants to do anything should go there. Those are the policy makers. Those, that ministry should be allowed, the ministry should be allowed to exist and work with the guidelines and the processes. Unless, of course, there will be a lot of silos. This for rice, this for beans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only God knows. <laughs> well, many thank you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> On that <laughs> note, <laughs> we've got to call it quits here. Um, Honorable Magajida Waliyu, Chairman House Committee on Power. It's our pleasure to have been part of this discussion. Thank you this very morning. much. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank you so um, much. Engineer Maman Jumalawal, Executive Director, Independent System of Polity Transmission Company of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on. Good morning, Nigeria. And uh, some appreciation goes to, uh, you know, engineer Dr. Wilson Ali, uh, uh, Zapron Consulting Company, that is. Uh, we thank you so much for coming on Good Morning Nigeria today. Thank you, please. Thank you. A very big thank you also to, you know, Odion Omofoman, energy expert and chief executive officer, New Hampshire Group. It's our pleasure being part of us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Much. Let's now take sports before we round up completely.